Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Super Messiah. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links can be found in the description for everything we discuss, so let's get on with it. So this week, Chris returns with a 10 for the chairman. We hear the future plans for the flight model, plus some new changes for new backers. If you are still to sign up to the RSI website, please use my referral code as shown on screen or in the description and you'll receive 5,000 United Earth credits which can be spent in the Voyager Direct Store for your ships, your character or whatever you choose. You don't have to spend anything to sign up, it's only once you pledge that I'll be granted an RP point which will get me some little rewards in the future. Kicking off this week, Chris was back with another 10 for the chairman. Straight on to the questions, will there be a two-step verification login and when will it be implemented? Very important. Chris says that they are working on it at the moment. Turbulent was there helping to plan it, so it's coming soon. TM, he says. Next question. When you are part of a crew in a ship and the owner logs off, what happens to the ship? Does it just disappear? And Chris says, no, the ship remains in the instance. So as long as someone is in that instance, it will remain. There's still some processes they need to figure out so it can't be abused, but the ship will not just disappear. He says 2.1 and onwards will allow them to test this sort of system, which is why we have access to it. So things will change down the line and we'll see how it will all work. Third question, is there any tech you're working on which will allow for a better game for those with average systems, or do you expect that only those with high-end PCs will get the benefits? Now he says that optimization hasn't really happened much yet. We do get little chunks of optimization where, with each patch. As it sort of happens, it's an ongoing job and it is being done. They will really nail down a lot of, of it when the game is more fleshed out. And they plan for it to be sort of mid-level systems and up. Next question, will we be able to pick up plant life or random items in the persistent universe? For example, can we pick a flower on a planet and cultivate it? Quite a cool question. Chris says that you'll definitely be able to pick up things and potentially like flowers and fauna and so forth. Also, hunting will be available, so there will be maybe jobs to hunt animals for their skins, for their, you know, I don't know, whatever they give out. They want to encourage travel as well, so you'll be able to collect mementos rather than have things like achievements or trophies that you get through Steam. So you'll be able to fly down to Paris, get a little Eiffel Tower and then stick that in your hangar or on your ship somewhere as a memento of you being there. He says you won't likely be able to pick up every flower you see, but there will be some gameplay to encourage things like this as well. So maybe there will be a job where someone on an endeavour needs you to go and collect so many different flower brands or seeds brands and then you go and pick them next question what long-term plans or ideas do you have to punish players who are griefing now this is a question that i think comes up quite a lot and what you currently see in the mini pu is not how it's going to be this is still the mini test bed and they didn't want to introduce a nanny state within this mini pu of crusader so that they can see what people get up to and what they actually do to grief people and then they'll know what to stop how to stop them players who kill someone where it isn't authorized for pvp then the comm satellites or the comm arrays will pick up the ship's black box broadcast of the unlawful attack and then place a bounty on that attacker's head, which will then allow other players and NPCs to fairly engage in PvP with that pirate or that person who started the attack. This will also grant you uh, UEC as well if it's a job. Now, if the pirates disable these comm satellites in that particular area and then attack, this attack will not be broadcasted to the rest of the verse. So it's kind of cool if you're going to attack a convoy, you want to take out the comma stations or the comma rays around that area so that the information cannot be broadcasted and people won't know about the attack. Rules of conduct will be enforced in some areas of space and hopefully it will be in, he says, about 2.3 and onwards. Next question, will we be able to move different elements of the HUD to different monitors? Things like radar, wireframe, pin targets, comms and chats, etc. Now Chris says the plan is for your HUD, you should be able to be moved around. So cockpit monitors should be able to be defaulted to whatever screen you choose. You won't be able to take your, your visor HUD and place them on the ship's sort of MFD displays or whatever multi-function displays though but you will be able to swap things around with your hud in starter ships they will have more basic functionality so you may not have as much customization on starter ships with their very sort of basic avionic systems but you will be able to upgrade your avionics so you get more choice and options to play around with next question will larger ships have damage control lockers where emergency repair parts are stored to respond to shipboard fires hull breaches damage dangerous gases etc etc and chris says yes there will be specific gameplay where nodes and things that can break will, will need repairing. On ships, pipes connect systems together and these pipes run through different connectors, like a sort of, like a fuse if you like. And that fuse will blow and the system will stop. So you need to go and find the appropriate area, open this up, remove the fuse and replace it with a new one. It'll be far more in depth than that, that's just 
the very basics. Fires, he says, can break out and they will need to be put out. Multi-crew gameplay will improve over the next few patches. Pilots will also be able to designate certain systems to certain seats, etc, etc. It's all going to come online pretty soon. Very excited for this. Next question, how many more plus 0.1 patches or iterations are currently planned before reaching another milestone? Presumably Alpha 3.0. So he says that there's no plans for 3.0 just yet. This year it's all focused on the plus ones basically. So 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 onwards. 3.0 he says maybe something like jump points. But again, they're not focused on that, so they can't really say, but do stay tuned. Second to last question, what are the Star Marine's plans? If you don't know, Star Marine was a game mode that was supposed to come out before the multi-crew or the, so the baby PU was out. Very much like Arena Commander, where you can play FPS in a competitive arena which has no influence on the actual verse. He sort of wanted to address this because it comes up a lot. And like I said, Star Marine is just a game mode like Arena Commander to play FPS until they manage to combine it all together. So you've got your, your ship flying and your landing and so forth. 2.0 is that. It's everything working together fluently. They will be adding more features to FPS. 2.2 will have things like the cover system. And then later on we'll have vaulting, sliding, stances, different weapons. They will all come too. Once it's all together, they will then just switch on Star Marine and we'll be able to play, but it's got to be fleshed out properly first. Last question. Can we dogfight inside huge structures where only your piloting skills will keep you alive? And he says, yes, absolutely. A goal is to have closed in dogfighting. Squadron 42 has a thing called the Schumann Mining Station, which is around six kilometers in length. I think a lot of the, the first edition or the first episode of Squadron 42 will be focused around this base. But it has lots of structural stuff jutting out from it. And the plans are to have a closer structure fight. So you will be flying through these structures, taking out other sh like Vandul and other ships. The same goes with Asteroid Fields and the Persistent Universe will feature similar stuff too. The issue is currently getting the AI to fly close to it and not kill themselves. <laughs> lots of work is needed on the AI, he says, but it's coming together well. Anyway, that was 10 for the Chairman. Some brilliant questions, even better answers. Tell me your thoughts. So this week in Around the Verse, episode 2.16, it was a very, very long episode. Start off with Sandy and Ben explaining that the 2016 planning summit is still underway for the Star Citizen's immediate future. But straight on to news from Around the Verse, starting with LACIG. They're working hard on additional Caterpillar concepts. They're getting it ready for production. Character clothing items are being fleshed out, plus more manufacturers. They're working on the EVA hood what you should be seeing and how it should look, and also cleaning up the thruster effects. From Austin, Texas CIG, they're just finishing up the party system improvements which should be implemented within the next patch. This will allow leaving enough room for party members rather than splitting you up. Hurston layout is now finalized. They're now working on the shop layout and it's I think it's currently moved to white box. We've got some new shops, one of them called McClear's, which is clothing. This is more of a, a mining blue collar and some white collar as well. Showcase or Hurston Dynamic Showcase is a weapons manufacturer for ships to shop to buy specialized Hurston weapons. So they'll be focusing more on Hurston weapons soon just to bring them so there's, there's a good array for us to choose from. And another shop is Reclamation and Disposal, which is a good place to bring your salvaged parts. So if you are out salvaging ships and other systems and things, you can bring them to Reclamation and Disposal and sell them. Finally, the Jean Scout is well on its way. The first lighting pass is done and it should be the next ship we get to play with. Foundry Forge 2 UK, they are working on some audio issue patch in Crusader, which we all seem to hear at the moment. They've also implemented the AI cover system, which is not in our build, but in their own internal build. And they're looking at tools to automate the process of managing data just to get it more streamlined. Foundry Fox 2 in Frankfurt, they are working on patching improvements, so getting it, getting the patching process quicker. Also, tools for cinematics are being created. Procedural planets are being worked on as well. They're still up and coming. They're now getting physics into specific places. Now, they're also working on perception factoring and visual perception for AI, and then moving on to the audio perception as well. So it's in space and obviously not in space. This will also allow AI to react to sound accordingly. From there, we had the Around the Verse interview with Mark Skelton, who is the US art director. Do check it out in the links below. But after that, we had a really good ship shape episode with the Star Citizen flight team and discussing the flight model, sort of where it started and where it's going to. Now, if you didn't know, your ships are controlled by something called the IFCS, which is the Intelligent Flight Control System. This helps manage the ship's flight and just things, adjust your thrusters accordingly when your ship's mass or damage changes. They said they're adding third order motion and tuning it. This is sort of acceleration of acceleration. So lots of ships perform a second slower at the moment than they used to. And they are revisiting all the ship acceleration and so on and so forth. They're also looking at combat in crews, which is not particularly supported yet, but it will be expanded on. They're updating how they track the ships, getting better data from each ship so they can see which ship slides too much and so on and so forth. 
Currently, it's one IFCS for all ships, but modules and upgrades will affect your ship's flight control system in different ways. Things like performance per certain axis, Different manufacturers will offer different features as well, and potentially you can have three to four different mods per ship. So you may know how the base model of a particular ship flies, but if you find another ship floating there in space and you get into it and try and take it away, it will fly completely different after all the upgrades have been added to it. A big change coming soon, they say, is that you won't always get perfect control from your thrusters. Some manufacturers will design better thrusters than others, but things like turbulence will affect it. So there will be slight imperfections in your thrusters, allowing for a more realistic control. Atmospheric Flight's foundation is getting fleshed out as well. It should work technically right out of the box, as everything is affected by your ship's condition, so your thrusters and your damage, etc. The question is, what is the best way to apply the external atmospheric forces to the ships, as they don't want to model aerodynamics completely, they'd rather just add turbulence in a realistic manner. And things like atmospheric drag will be interesting as your ships are thruster driven, so it will determine how they handle. Anyway, really good interview. That was the gist of it. I do recommend watching it, so do follow the links to get to that particular point. Most valuable post goes to Frugal with his Learn to Fly video. I'll try and find the link to that. And the sneak peek is kind of impressive. It's a personal railgun, aka the Scourge. It looks like this is what's going to be used to take down ships while on foot, which is very, very exciting. I cannot wait to have a play around with that. Anyway, that was Around the Verse. Tell me your thoughts. Let's move on. Also this week, we had a post titled Roundup. And in this, it brought some few changes coming to the Star Citizen website. And also just some updates. Started off with a free flight, which is available for this week. You have access to the Hornet F7C, the Aurora LN, and the Mustang Delta. It's a good chance for you to test your flying skills, get used to the game, see what it's like. Test out your rig as well, see how it performs. You don't need to have pledged, you just need to be signed up, so do use my referral code. Secondly, the release of 2.1.2 patch is now live. Nothing too major, just mainly bug fixes and so forth. On February the 14th, Squadron 42 and Star Citizen packages will be split, meaning that you will no longer be able to buy both games when you pledge. Squadron 42 will be available as a standalone game. So again, buy before the 14th of February to get both of the games and save money on this. Unmelting ship packages will be granted via store credit tokens. So if you have a ship that you wish you had never melted, you will be able to unmelt it. However, these tokens will only be issued once every three months and they will not stack either, so use them wisely. The Jean Scout sale is ending tomorrow, so on the 1st of February, on the Monday, if you are wanting to pick one up, get it ASAP or you will regret it. And finally, Star Citizen put up all their social media sites, plus all the devs who are working on the game willing to allow you access to their Twitter account, so check out the link titled Roundup and follow people on Twitter, including myself. Also, this week we had a new portfolio post showing us The Ark, where you can learn the history of this huge construct from its early days trying to help keep the peace between species to its present day gathering data and information from many sources to expand our knowledge of the known universe. A new post called Untold Tales was released titled The Unanswered Cry. In this we hear about a search and rescue operation that was anything but normal. And finally, Gillian Anderson's interview is available so be sure to check out what she had to say from her time spent working with Chris Roberts and all the CIG team on Squadron 42. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching and thank you to our subscribers, plus a massive thank you to our patrons as you make this possible. If you like what we do and want to help us make it better, follow the link in the description to our Patreon page to learn more. <laughs>